Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video. If you guys could do me a huge favour and smash the likes. If we can shoot for 4 likes due to the fact we've just watched 4 hours of SummerSlam, that would be absolutely bloody awesome. But today, I am reviewing WWE SummerSlam 2015. What did you guys think of the show? In my opinion, I was actually really disappointed in this show. I'm seeing loads of people saying it was really good. I'm seeing people saying it was awesome. Really, I am going to say everything I think about this show in this video, but honestly, I was not too impressed with tonight's show. I think the things that they could have done well, they did do well, but they still managed to balls up some stuff, which honestly, they should not be doing. Now, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go from the start, which was Sheamus against Randy Orton, Make my way through to the main event. So if you want to hear my thoughts about the main event, then skip till the end. But we're going to start off with the first match, which was Sheamus against Randy Orton. Now, I was sort of surprised they started off with this match because when you looked at the match card, this was probably the match which nobody was looking forward to. But actually, it ended up being probably the third best match of the night. It was really good. It was one of the best matches on the show by far. It was... Better than their match at Battleground, it was really, really good. I really liked the RKO where Sheamus was going for the battering ram and Randy Orton hit the RKO. That was great. And I also loved the finish where Sheamus hit not one, but two bro kicks. I really hope when he cashes in that briefcase, that's exactly what he does because this was absolutely friggin' fantastic. It made him look like a beast. It made him look like somebody you don't want to mess with. It was a really entertaining match, but the ending was superb. They did it fantastically. Really glad Sheamus went over as well because Sheamus, he really needs to start being taken seriously. So a win here over, I think it's a 12-time world champion, Randy Orton, is absolutely fantastic. They need to start building this guy up. If he's the next world champion, he's got to look like the next world champion. And with a win over Randy Orton here... That's going to do absolute wonders. He shouldn't have lost at Battleground, but I think they've done well here by giving him the win, finally, at SummerSlam. Sheamus, well done, fella. Great entertaining match from both guys, and thankfully, finally, Sheamus gets a win and gets some momentum. He's the bloody Money in the Bank briefcase holder. He needs to start picking up some wins. A win over Randy Orton is as good as it gets. So for me, it gets a huge thumbs up, a great way to start the show entertaining match and they even booked it correctly there we go guys what a start to SummerSlam the next match was a really really good match as well it was a tag team championship match it was the new day who won the tag team titles against the primetime players Los Matadores and the Lucha Dragons now I don't like these eliminate these kind of fatal four-way tag matches they don't make any sense. Why would you tag in another tag team? Surely you just tag in your partner. So the whole idea of the, and the rules of these matches are absolutely retarded. But they always make for some really, really good matches. Because obviously, as fans watching at home, you're bound to like one or two of the tag teams. There's so many tag teams in the match, you're bound to favour one or two. So for me, I really like this match because... Three out of the four tag teams, I'm a big fan of. So I love this match. It was fast paced, as always tag team matches are. It was fun. It was interesting. Every team looked good. I mean, it was everything you want from a tag team match and more. There was an epic ending. It was just all round really, really good. It was given enough time and we got a title change. All in all, it was really good and the right team won in the end. The primetime players haven't really been doing it for me as the champions. The New Day are by far the best tag team WWE has had in years. And finally, the New Day have got the belts back and they are probably the best heels on the roster right now. They are absolutely brilliant. Xavier Woods is amazing. He doesn't even have to wrestle and he's amazing. He is absolutely brilliant. It is such a good decision to put the belts back on the New Day. They are are the best thing since sliced bread. So why shouldn't they have the tag belts? It was a brilliant idea to put it on the new day once again. They could have easily just had the primetime players win here. But I think the fact that... um, Well, I don't know. I was I was a bit... I, I thought maybe they put the belts on the new day because there isn't going to be a title change on the rest of the card. But there actually was. So the fact that they've given it to the new day was a bit of a shocker for me. But exactly the right decision. I'm really happy they did that. All around entertaining match. Great decision. Thumbs up from me. When we're looking at this. Two matches in. It was going 
so well. But then it, it it just went downhill. We had Dolph Ziggler against Rusev, which ended in a double countout. Yeah, a pay-per-view match ends in a double countout. I mean, come on. What are they thinking? They, oh my God. A double countout, right. For a start off, I am absolutely sick of this Lana and Rusev feud. So I was not looking forward to this match whatsoever. And the match was boring. Yep, the match was boring. So I'm already bored of the feud. I didn't care for the match. I found the build up towards this match horrible. So I was already pretty pissed off. But when the match went around and it wasn't entertaining, that made me even more pissed off. But when it ends in a double count out, that makes me even more pissed off. But what made me even more pissed off after that is the realisation that we're probably going to get a rematch in Night of Champions. Now, I was hoping that Ziggler was going to win here. All fine and dandy. That would be the end of the feud. But now, it looks like we're going to get an even... We're going to have to wait another four weeks to get the rematch. That's another four weeks of Lana against Rusev on Monday Night Raw. I don't think I can put up with that any longer. I think I'm going to have to switch it off every time this Lana and Rusev storyline is on Monday Night Raw. I cannot put up with it. It is boring as hell. And I thought we were going to... It was going to be the final conclusion at SummerSlam. But no, for some reason, WWE books it as a double countout. Are they retarded? This is exactly what people don't pay $9.99 for. I mean, it wasn't even a good match. So why carry on until Night of Champions? That makes absolutely no sense. Barely anybody cares about this feud. They're not going to care about it in four weeks' time. And it wasn't even a good match. I mean... We didn't care about Orton against Sheamus at Battleground, but at least they had good matches. But this wasn't even a good match, so why are we going to care about it four weeks later at Night of Champions? Ridiculous. But, it right, even the Stephen Amell and Neville match against Stardust and King Barrett was better wrestling than Rusev against Dolph Ziggler. So it's going to get a thumbs down from me. We're then going to move on to Stephen Amell and Neville defeating Stardust and King Barrett, which actually... I was really intrigued to see how Stephen Amell put up in the WWE ring. Apart from that, I wasn't too bothered about this match. And actually, it was actually pretty good. It it impressed me how much time they gave him in the ring. I thought Neville was going to do everything. And then for the finish, they were going to have Stephen Amell maybe hit one move and then pin for the win. But actually, he did more of the moves, I guess, than Neville. And Neville got the win instead. So... All around, it was quite a good decision because, obviously, Neville gets the win. That puts him over. Stephen Amell was on the pay-per-view. He got a lot of uh, moves in. So, instead of, you know, what they do with celebrities sometimes, they just give them one move. But, actually, he probably did more moves than Neville. So, that was a lot better than what they usually do. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good match, but it was cool. And um, he, he looked good. It was intriguing to see how well he would do. And he did a lot better than what I thought. So that was okay. Neville looked great. And um, that's all we're going to say about that. It wasn't much. But there we go. So it's going to get a thumbs up. But nothing too fantastic. What wasn't fantastic was probably Ryback, Big Show and The Miz. Which had about a 10 week build towards this match. Yeah. Um, it didn't happen at Battlegrounds, so it turned into about a 10-week build. And the build we got towards this match was probably the most build out of 90% of the matches on this card. But it was probably given the least amount of time out of any of the matches on the card. And you could tell this match was rushed from high heaven. I mean, it was given, what, five minutes maybe? It was an absolute clusterfuck. There was maybe three moves which happened in this match. And it wasn't entertaining at all. The only entertaining thing was the the pin combination at the end where Miz tried to pin everybody. Um, apart from that, this match did not deliver. It wasn't given enough time. Um, I'm not sure if a few of the matches before it went over. But they gave this match about five minutes. And I was actually invested in this match. One of the matches on the card I was invested into was one of the matches which was one of the shortest matches on the card. Which is a huge disappointment Five minutes for an Intercontinental Championship match. And the finish was kind of dumb as well. I mean, Ryback didn't even hit his finisher. He just picked off, picked up the win from, I think it was a, a KO punch by Big Show on two mids. But um, it was a funny finish. It was unique, but it didn't really make the champion look strong and really wasn't memorable. The match was five minutes. It was just horrible. We're going to move on from that. I mean, it was disgusting. 
10 week build for that it really wasn't worth it in the end was it i mean i thought it was actually going to turn out quite well i mean for an intercontinental championship match it was built really well but they gave it five minutes so they balls that one up it's going to get a thumbs down from me the next match was actually roman reigns and dean ambrose against bray Wyatt and luke harper good match it was an it was an okay match nothing too memorable i never really wanted to see this match in my opinion um but it's nice to see that finally dean ambrose gets a pay-per-view win i mean it's been a long time since he got a pay-per-view win and um yeah roman reigns got his payback on bray wyatt finally so that was nice to see um bray wyatt taking the pin i think he took the pin i'm not too happy about that i think bray wyatt deserves a hell of a lot better than what he's getting and bray wyatt and luke harper's first match since teaming up together being back together and they lose is that good i don't think so but um yeah i think there was no surprise that roman reigns and dean ambrose got the win here but um yeah nothing too memorable it wasn't amazing it certainly wasn't the best match on the show but it was okay it was a good match it was a good pay-per-view match it was certainly better than what you expect on your average raw or smackdown so yeah it was a good match but nothing too spectacular and i wasn't ever really invested in this feud at all i wasn't too happy when they added ambrose but it was an okay match it wasn't too spectacular but it delivered it it was what we expected so no really real worries there so it's gonna get a thumbs up from me now the best match of the night for sure was seth rollins against john cena i mean yeah it it was fucking amazing i mean seth rollins is attire at the start, I thought it looked hideous. At the end, I felt like he looked like an absolute beast. I mean, he looked like a cocky bastard, but he showed it tonight. He, I mean, this was the first time that we've really seen what Rollins can do. I mean, his title reign up to this point has been an absolute shambles. It's been a real disappointment. Maybe still is. I mean, they kind of ballsed up the ending to this match. I'll get onto that in a minute. But yeah, this is the first real time that Seth Rollins has showed what he can really do. I think he looked absolutely amazing tonight. Once again, John Cena puts on a great match. Um, Not his best match of the year. I think his match against Owens was better. But a Seth Rollins and Cena match at SummerSlam, you can't complain. It was good. It was really good. It was probably their best match they've had together. And yeah, it it delivered. It was probably better than what we thought it was going to be. But yeah, the finish was dumb as hell. I mean... Once again, they protect John Cena. This guy never loses clean on a pay-per-view. Um, and we're going to say goodbye to John Cena's US Open challenges, which is quite sad. But seriously, does John Stewart belong in the middle of a World Heavyweight Championship and US title championship match? I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. This is not one, but two championship title matches titles in one match and you've got Jon Stewart kind of playing a kind of comedy role in the middle of this huge high key match and a match which delivered up to the point when Jon Stewart came out you thought this could have been you know one of the matches of the year one of the most historical matches of the year but they even managed the balls that up by having Jon Stewart come out I mean it was all going so well but they still managed to balls it up. I mean, what the fuck? They... <sighs> it was amazing. It was perfect. But they still managed to balls it up by having Jon Stewart come out. <sighs> they... Sometimes they are just so stupid. <sighs> they ju- they managed to balls up. And this wasn't even the biggest balls up of the night either. We'll get onto that later in the main event. So I think they have like a running joke how they can balls up a match as bad as possible. I mean, what was he doing? This is retarded. The authority, obviously, the story is the authority paid Jon Stewart to screw over Jon Cena and give Seth Rollins the win. But the thing is, Seth Rollins has retained his title by dubious decision every time. But... He's probably one of the most over guys on the roster. Does he really need to win every match under dubious decision? I mean, he's now got two title belts and still hasn't won 
a legit time. Ta- he still hasn't pinned somebody legitly. And he doesn't need to win by, you know, um, by cheating every time. Because he's already gets booed out the building. So, I don't, it's just frustrating, boring is probably the right word to see that every match ends not the same, but, I mean, you could have predicted this a mile off. I mean, it was either Kane or somebody who, who was going to help Seth Rollins win here. But John Stewart is even worse than Kane, I think. But did he really need to win by dubious decision here? Did they did they have to protect John Cena that much that they had to use John fucking Stewart to do it? I mean, they need they they managed to balls up anything. It's retarded. So the match itself gets a thumbs up from me, but the finish is dumb. But I mean, Seth Rollins being a two-time champion at the same time is. One of the best things they've done in recent memory. I'm not sure how that one's going to plan out, but it sounds like it's going to be a hell of a thing. I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but Seth Rollins looks like a beast now, but he doesn't really back it up in the ring, does he? So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I would have been a lot happier if Seth Rollins had pinned Cena in the middle of the ring than what went down. I mean, it could have gone a hell of a lot better. But... The match was entertaining, so we can forget a little bit about the shitty ending by remembering that it was an entertaining match. Um, The next match was Team PCB defeating Team Bala and Team Bad. I have no idea why Team BAD got eliminated first. That made absolutely no sense for me. I thought they were probably going to win. Considering Sasha lost her title the night before, I thought... Sasha's team was probably going to go over here. That's logical, in my opinion. But for some reason, Team PCB has won pretty much every match in this whole feud. And it's getting a bit boring, in my opinion. Um, Yeah, PCB go over every single time. Every single time PCB are involved in a match, they always go over. I mean, when's Team Bad going to go over? I mean, you've got freaking Sasha Banks on their team. Naomi, who is... Well overdue a Divas Championship. Um, but for some reason, they always put Team PCB over. So, dull, boring. Why the Bella Twins managed to survive in this match until the end completely confuses me. They should have been eliminated first because we all know that a Knight of Champions, Nikki Bella, is going to lose that title belt. So, they should be making her look as vulnerable as possible. So, why she didn't get eliminated first... Makes absolutely no sense. I mean, everybody wanted to see Sasha Banks a hell of a lot more than what we got to see of her tonight. Um, And yeah, at the end of the day, you've got to remember that this was a crap match. But it only happened so that we forget that Nikki Bella didn't have to defend her title tonight. I mean, it's just to make us... It's just, it, this was just to make up for the fact that she didn't have to defend her title. Because, oh, she's going to beat AJ Lee's range. She's going to get those 300 days in the bag. Literally, the only reason this match happened was so that she didn't have to defend her title on the pay-per-view. And the match was fucking shit. So, yeah. And Team PCB went over, which they've done every single week. So, yeah, this match is going to get a big thumbs down from me. Um, Then we got Kevin Owens against Cesaro, which was a good match. I saw loads of people saying, oh, this is awesome, this is amazing. No, um, Kevin Owens against John Cena was a hell of a lot better. Um... Yeah, they could have put on a much better match. It was a good match, but given more time, they could have put on twice the good as good match. I mean, yeah, this they could have put on a hell of a lot better match than what they did. It wasn't that good. Um, it was, I say it wasn't that good. It was good, but I expected a hell of a lot more, and we didn't get it. Um, and it, I wasn't really too bought into the feud either i mean the build was kind of horrific it wasn't really meaningless Uh, it wasn't really meaningful a lot of the matches on the card weren't really meaningful i mean it was a four hour show but if they condensed it down to three hours i think we would have been invested in a lot more matches i mean they tried to build way too many matches but really didn't build any of them um and this was one of them i mean i wasn't really too invested in it i thought it was i thought it was going to be an entertaining match so um, I settled for it. I was like, right, this is going to be a good match. I don't care how badly it's built. It's going to be an entertaining match. But it didn't. It wasn't as good as what we thought it was going to be. It's going to get a thumbs up from me. 
but they could have done a hell of a lot better. And um, I'm glad Kevin Owens went over, though, because he's lost twice in a row to John Cena, which made his first win over John Cena look like a fluke. He needed a, a legit win, especially due to the fact he, he, he lost to Finn Balor the night before. So, yeah, great decision to have Kevin Owens win. Cesaro's just going to maintain how popular he is, whether he loses or wins here. So, yeah, good decision to have Kevin Owens go over here. He He's going to be a big star if they keep this one up. Um, yeah, correct decision, but they could have put on a better match. Um, the last match was Undertaker against Brock Lesnar, which saw some people say that they thought this was the best match of the night. I think storytelling-wise was probably the best match of the night, but entertaining-wise or wrestling-wise, what, what Rollins and Cena was a lot better. Um, this was a lot slower paced, but storytelling wise was a lot better. I mean, there were so many big moments in this match where, like, Brock and Undertaker were laughing at each other when they sat up. The F5 through the announce table, Undertaker kicking out of uh, three F5s. Um, the kind of confusion at the end, which I'm going to get into, which I wasn't a fan of, but still good storytelling. They could do a lot with that. But yeah, it, it was the match which we should have got at WrestleMania 30, but we didn't. Um, it, it it makes up a lot for the, the, the really crap match we got two years ago at Mania. Yeah, this match was a hell of a lot better than that match. It, this, this match was good. It was one of the best matches of the year. It was good. Um, just the, the ending. They, 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 they still, look, good match, but they still managed to balls it up fucking hell they balls up everything like the match was going so well people were liking it the crowd was so into it yeah another moment where undertaker hit that fucking amazing choke slam like everybody was so into it it was amazing but they still managed to balls it up they are oh, they're so stupid like the two big matches going into this show was rollins cedar undertaker and brock and both matches didn't end clean. Like, seriously? And that's on the back of a Battleground pay-per-view, which had a main event which didn't end cleanly either. I mean, they protect their stars way too much. It is ridiculous. I mean, they protected Cena on this pay-per-view. They protected Brock on this pay-per-view. They protected Undertaker on this pay-per-view. I mean shit that's not what we want we want conclusions to our matches we pay 9.99 and we get you know uh, and even Dolph Ziggler and Rusev they protected them as well come on three was it three dodgy endings yeah I think yeah three you know not clean was the 10 matches 30% of the matches were not didn't end clean it's retarded um yeah, what are we going to say about this? Um, so, Undertaker taps out. Um, I don't know how the guy that does, does the ring bell could see that Undertaker was tapping out and the referee couldn't. That is just dumb as hell. Um, since when did the ring guy ring the bell unless the referee told him to, to do it? That's another thing. It's always the referee's call. And why would they do something like that in the main event? I mean, how many people were watching this and they decide to pull a trick like that in the main event? I mean, I could understand if they did it, you know, earlier in the night in the Cena-Rollins match or something like that. But in a main event, when you're it's, you're expecting, you know, a conclusion to this big rematch, you're expecting a memorable ending, a good memorable ending. You get this where, like, even the commentators were fucking confused. Everybody was confused at home. You're just like, meh. And like, even people in the audience, you know, they all went to see Brock against Undertaker. Who's going to win? And then they just fuck it up like this. And then I still I still see people saying, oh, awesome, this was amazing, what a great ending. I don't understand some people. Like, they couldn't have ballsed it up anymore. Um, yeah, you've got Brock Lesnar, who hasn't won a pay-per-view match since January, who should have gone over here. Um, and then they have Undertaker walk out as the victor, so what was the whole point of ending the streak? Um, the whole point of ending the streak was evidently to put over Undertaker, was it? 
so this street was ended so that we could put over Undertaker at SummerSlam 2015. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I mean, you could say that Brock still hasn't been pinned, but why couldn't they have Undertaker lose here? I don't understand. I mean, we're not going to see him until shit, like WrestleMania 31? 32, sorry? They could even have had... Right, the only thing that I could have thought of that would have been better than this would be have Sting come out and cost Undertaker the match. At least that, you know, gives a bit of progression. But it just made no sense. And... I don't know. Retarded. Do you really, did you really want your main event of SummerSlam going down like that? We've waited five weeks for that match and we just get fucked over by you like a crappy booking. Oh, God. Sorry, but... You know, some of the matches were good, but... They seriously ballsed up. Two, the two big matches on the card, they ballsed up. Now, Brock still hasn't been pinned, so technically... Brock's still a beast, but he hasn't won since January. Um, so yeah, they sort of protected both guys here, but why? Why couldn't he just have beaten Undertaker? Just, I don't know. The main event, and you have it end like that? Retarded. Um, but anyway, um, I, SummerSlam's going to get a 6 out of 10 from me, because it, it wasn't anything impressive. Four hours is too much, Um and anyway, where was the incentive to watch the pre-show? Though I watched the pre-show because somebody told me the tag match was going to be on the pre-show. There was nothing that happened on the pre-show. It was a complete waste of time. The only thing that happened was Kevin Owens was there for about five seconds. Apart from that, what was the incentive to watch the kickoff show? There was absolutely no incentive. Four hours of SummerSlam, just don't do that again. I mean, three hours would have been much better because at least then they could have built up matches. They didn't. They hardly built up any of the matches on the card. Um, and the matches they did build up, Cena, Rollins, Undertaker, Tate, and Brock Lesnar, they ballsed up. So I don't understand how people can sit here and say, oh, SummerSlam, best pay-per-view of the year. Shit, what? Are you having a laugh? Come on, 6 out of 10 is 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 nice. That's been nice. So thanks for watching, guys. What did you guys think? Follow me on Twitter. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Take care. Spike your hair.